Hello everyone, we are doing module 9 on interconnection networks. This is lecture number 3 where we are going to discuss about routing methods. So what is a routing algorithm? So in a network which is connected uh, with several switches, nodes and uh, all these are connected using links and channels uh, and so on, we need to send a packet from one node to another node. Right? So, you need to find the route through which it is going to follow. For example, you want to go from your home to your college, you have to follow some path to reach to your college. There are definitely multiple paths, but which is the best path to follow is decided by the routing algorithm. So, essentially in a interconnection network, the path which a packet follows uh, from a source to the destination is called the route of the path and uh, or route of the packet and this is decided by something called the routing algorithm. Now these routing algorithms come in variety of flavors depending on what type of network you have. If we are dealing with a large network like internet or computer networks, definitely it's a different domain of a problem. But when I talk of interconnection networks on a chip, we have very limited number of resources. We may have several nodes, but we have a limit that we need to decide very quickly because uh, the latency will affect the processor and the system performance. Hence, um, the decision has to be done very fast. Also, the switch design or the algorithms implementation also has to be as simple as possible because we cannot waste time, resources and energy and area to make this decision uh, logic more complex. Right? So, we need a very simple algorithm for doing the routing. So, overall we uh, among several other methods, there are three main ways in which uh, routing can be done. Okay? So, for uh, achieving high speed uh, network performance for interconnect networks, we are going to look at mainly three types of routing, arithmetic routing, source based routing and table lookup. All these have to guarantee that they are as simple as possible to be implemented and fast because we want a quick decision when the packet moves through the network. We should not uh, hold back the packet and wait and decide where it should move. So it should be done very quickly in as few clock cycles as possible. Okay. This uh, simple decision is also going to affect how our switch will get designed because the hardware complexity also affects the area and uh, energy budgets of the chip. At the end, the algorithm must be free from deadlock. Okay. So, what is the routing algorithm? So, if I say this is my switch, the peach color box is my switch and some uh, packet or data is coming on the input channel, from here it has to go to a destination. So, destination information comes with this packet which is coming on this uh, port. Right. So, when this comes, the switch has to decide where to route it further. Right? So, should it route it to the north side, to the south side, to the east or is it uh, destined to this particular node that is the local port. So, this decision logic of where to route the packet is done by the routing algorithm. Okay? So, we will see quickly uh, three of these. The arithmetic routing as the word says arithmetic, this uh, comes with some simple maths to be done. So, the when the packet moves out from the source, we know the source and the destination. So, what we do is simply uh, find out the difference of the x and y coordinates. Okay? So, given a 2D grid or 2D mesh type of a network, from source to destination you find the delta x and the delta y assuming the origin at a given point. So, if I assume the origin to be here at this node, then this will be my coordinate 0, 0 and accordingly uh, my delta x and y will get decided. Alternatively, my origin can be anywhere else. Suppose I call this as my origin, then my decision would be different. Okay. So, let me take a middle point as an origin so that we can uh, explore all options. Okay. So, um, this suppose this is my origin, suppose if this is 0, 0 and I want to take my packet from this green node 1 to this green node number 2. right? So, this uh, light green to dark green is my uh, path of uh, passage. So, when I want to take this, how will the packet start from the light green node? So, the from the light green to the dark green, it has to find out the delta x and the delta y. So, um, the overall logic is if your difference in x coordinate is negative, it is negative means you have to go on the left side of your origin which is on the west direction. Right? 
So, if this is my origin and if we are standing here, if the delta x is negative, I am supposed to go in this direction. If my delta x is positive, it means that the destination is on the right hand direction. Hence, I want to take the east port. Okay. Similarly, for the y, so if your y is negative, means you have to go down. So, you have to select the south direction. If your y is positive, you have to move up and so go, the, go to the north direction. If your delta is 0, what does it mean? We have already reached the destination that is the current processor is the destination node. So, in this example, if we start from the origin 0, 0 and I want to go from light green to dark green, um, I will request you to pause the video, find out the delta x, the delta y and then list down the different directions it should take. Okay. So, at the light green, what is the delta x and delta y for this? So, you will have to of course uh, name uh, the nodes and so on. So, if this is 0, 0, this is going to be 1, 0 because the x coordinate is 1 and y is 0. This is going to be negative 1, 0, right? This is going to be 0. Uh, so, the x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 1. This is 1, 1 and this is going to be x is 1 and y is 2. So, if you compute the delta, your delta will be 2 in the y direction and 2 in the x direction. So, I will have plus 2 and plus 2 as my delta x and delta y. So, if you start with this from the green node when it decides to move out, it will see that my x is positive. So, it will take the east direction. When it reaches here, again the x is positive, it again takes the east direction. Here when uh, the, of course, the x is 0. When x becomes 0, you have to check the y and here the y is plus 2. So, you will go up and then you will go up. And when you reach there, your deltas will reduce to 0 and you would have reach the destination. So, this is uh, a simple example to understand arithmetic routing. You can try the same thing using the given coordinates for the other two pairs from the dark pink to the light pink or from the light pink to the dark pink as a quick exercise for yourself. So, this type of routing where we have a path which goes in one direction first and then to the other direction. So, it follows the x direction first and then it follows the y direction is normally called the dimension order routing dimension order. I am following the dimension. First, I follow the x dimension and then I follow the y dimension. This is called the dimension order routing. A very popular routing method used by Intel NQ, Paragon, Caltex, uh, Torus chip and the J machine. Dimension order comes in two flavors. One is the xy routing and the second is the yx routing. So, what is xy routing? First, you go in the x direction and then in the y direction. Of course, you need to follow the delta x and delta y to decide the direction. So, if my delta x is positive, I will go in this direction first and then if the delta y is positive, we will go up, right? So, first I will go in the x direction and then I will go in the y direction. The same thing can happen if my delta x is negative, I would rather take this. If uh, delta y is negative, I will take this. Okay, so, there are four different methods uh, of routing in x and y. If you complement that same thing, we can have a yx routing where you can uh, first finish all the y and then go into the x direction. So, this is the yx routing where I first uh, go in the y direction and then as the requirement I can turn in the x direction either towards east or west. Okay, so, that was dimension order routing or arithmetic routing. Right. The second routing algorithm is source based routing. So, source based as the word says, uh, when you start from your source, you know the path to follow. Right. You are going from home to college, you have your uh, notebook in which you have written which streets to take, where to turn and so on. So, you have the complete algorithm with you or the steps with you. So, uh, when you finish the first step, you are going to discard the first step, go to the next step and decide, okay, I have already reached this so and so junction, should I move in which direction? So, you have a complete path already written with you when you start from home. So, that is called source based routing. So, here the header 
contains all the paths throughout the network that is which switch and which hop it should take which direction it should turn at what point right so complete information is already there and whenever you uh, reach one node where, or when you uh, travel one hop you have to delete that information for example if my header has all this information that i have to go first use p0 p0 essentially indicates uh, the direction in which I am going right. So, these are a subset of the path. So, path information is broken into several pieces. So, I will take the path P0. Once I have consumed it, I am going to delete this information and then take up P1 and then P2 and P3 right. So, this way as we move ahead, we are going to strip off the information which we have consumed. Okay, so um, what is the side effect of this? Definitely the switch design is very easy because the switch has to do nothing. It has to simply remove uh, one parameter and just follow the path as it is written in the header. Problem is the hosts have to be very intelligent, right? So all the intelligence lies with the host node because the host has to compute the complete algorithm or the complete pathway for reaching from one node to the other node. What's the disadvantage? If you see the header will become very long if your destination is very far. If the destination is close, it is going to be small, right? So the header tends to be large for far off destinations and in general, the header size is variable. So when there is a variability, it becomes difficult to manage in any hardware setup because if there is a fixed size, we can design more accurate and optimized hardware. This is still a popular design in some of these systems listed here. So that was source based routing. The third method is table driven. So as the word says table driven, there is a table which I have to refer. But where is this table? This table is with every switch. So every switch in the network is going to maintain a routing table. And when a packet comes to the switch, the packet header comes with a routing field I. So the header contains this uh, index i, this index i has to be uh, indexed into the routing table r. So I will take r of i to get an entry and what is this entry? It is another index or it is a direction in which I have to go, All right. So uh, in short, this is your routing table and if uh, this is your i could be 0, 1, 2, 3 and here I will say north, right. So if my input comes with i equal to 1, I will index into this table r and pick up that okay, this packet has to go to the north direction. Along with this, uh, depending on the type of implementations, you also have another field here. Uh, I can say it i prime, so I can call this i prime. So this second field tells what index to use in the next stop, right? Because I have consumed the index i in this identified the output port but when I go to the next hop in the next hop which index to use from the routing table has to be known. Now this will come again from the same routing table as another entry. So again R of i that entry will give me the index of the following hop. Once you have this index of the following hop, once you go to that hop, you again repeat the procedure. Use that index, find the direction and get the index of the next hop. The disadvantage of this is you have to store the big table in the switch. So you need the space, area and energy for doing this. So the table is sizable because if the network is large, your table will be large. It has to uh, keep the table updated because the table has to be reconfigurable in case your network changes its shape. So I should be able to configure the contents depending on the uh, connectivity of the network. Right. So, these are definitely not uh, used for on-chip, they are used for bigger uh, systems. So, if I have a small multi-core architecture, I can go for simpler dimension order routing algorithms rather than table driven. Of course, there are trade-offs in each and there is no one final decision. We are just looking at different ways in which we can do uh, real implementations, take care of many other matrix before coming to a final decision. All right, uh, so all these algorithms I would say were deterministic because uh, we know where to go, right? So 
be it a source based dimension order or table driven, it is decided to begin with that this is the path you're going to take, right? So this is the route you will follow to go to your college. Even if there is a traffic congestion, you are going to follow that. However, that has limitations that it leads to contention and uh, possibly uh, deadlock may happen or more delays can take place. Right? So how do I solve this problem? So we can go for an adaptive routing instead of a fixed routing. A fixed routing is called deterministic and the other is called adaptive. So as the word says adaptive, depending on the traffic, you can at runtime decide to use a different path than what you had decided. Okay, so dimension order was x and y. So it says go only in the x direction first and then to the y direction. But given that in the x direction there was a contention, there was some more traffic, more packets waiting, I can temporarily divert to y direction and then again follow the x direction. Right? So you can take alternative paths and then adaptive routing. So here in this grid, my x, y goes in this direction. My x, y dimension order routing will take up this uh, path. But if you say that uh, this particular link is busy here, what will we do? We can uh, divert our direction to the north for some time. Right? So I can come up to here and because the route is busy, I can go up here, then maybe again follow this and go up there. So overall, I have taken a zigzag path towards the destination in a mesh based system. So adaptive routing, the packet's uh, path is influenced by the traffic it encounters on the way. In a mesh, it can zigzag through. What happens in a fat tree? A fat tree topology, as the word says fat, you already uh, know that the root node has got uh, multiple connections and as you go down, the number of connections reduced and they are single connections at the leaf nodes. So you have multiple connections here, almost three to four uh, channels are attached. So if one particular channel is busy, you can take up another channel, right? So you can take alternate links rather than wait for the blocked links of your predetermined path. So when you take alternate options, we are talking about adaptive routing. So when I go for any routing, if it is giving me the shortest path, it is called a minimal algorithm. If it is not giving me the shortest path, it is called non-minimal. This is the simple uh, derivation which we can make shortest path versus non-minimal path. And the adaptive routing, we need to allow multiple routes for the packets. So when I have to choose which route to go, who will do this selection for me? Right? So here, um, when we were standing at this particular switch, the switch had to decide because it, suppose it was an adaptive routing algorithm, the switch had to decide should I take the east direction or should I divert the traffic to the north direction. Right? So this decision has to be done at runtime. So the switch design definitely will become complex because it has to keep updated about the traffic scenarios. It had to look at what links are available and what is the best link for this particular source destination pair. Okay? And this choice cannot be done earlier. It has to be done as the packet actually moves through the network. You can't do it beforehand. You have to do it at runtime when you are within the network and therefore uh, the switch design becomes complex in adaptive routing. Definitely, but they are very useful uh, to deliver better network throughput. Okay, now let us look at the concept of deadlock. So we all are familiar with deadlock that uh, this example shows that I have uh, A, B, C, D as three nodes which wish to send information and the node A, it is holding uh, a buffer and it wants to send something in B's buffer. What is B doing? B is holding a buffer and it wants to send this data to C and C is holding another buffer and it wants to send and same with D, right? So each of them is holding a buffer and the other one wants to send into that buffer. So A will succeed only if B allows it to put data here, right? B will allow only if C allows it to put. So we have a cyclic dependency and hence uh, this could result into a deadlock. So when I have a cycle of resources, uh, it leads to a deadlock. 
So, what is the solution for a deadlock? Because uh, a routing deadlock can easily happen in bigger networks when many packets are going at the same time. So, we could say that well this happened because uh, if you observe here, there was a cycle and essentially a packet was allowed to turn in every direction. I was permitting to take all turns. So, if I limit the number of turns, possibly I can avoid the deadlock and uh, that is one solution and the second solution is I can use virtual channels um, to avoid this. So, let us see both of them in little more detail. So, deadlock freedom using turn model is very popular. Again here I am going to give you a glimpse of how the turn model works. There are definitely uh, more literature available already about proving how it works and uh, how it is adapted to different topologies. So, we are going to look at it uh, assuming a 2D mesh topology. So, overall the topic on networks is going to give you a flavor of what all things exist and details of every topic are definitely available in more depth uh, in the existing literature outside this course. Okay, so, whatever uh, is sufficient to understand parallel architecture we are going to cover here, but this is not the only thing in interconnect networks. If you are interested you can read up more literature. Okay, so, let us look at the turn model for deadlock freedom. So, what am I going to do here? O overall, we are going to disallow certain turns so that the deadlock does not happen. That is, it will not form a cycle. Okay, so, this is, these are the different turns I have. So, I will say this is clockwise, right. I am turn, every turn is going clockwise. I will have another anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise uh, method of turning. So, we will call this as version 1, version 2. So, clockwise turns just uh, to understand the examples. Okay, so, we have all these turns and when I want to do a restriction that is I want to restrict certain turns, what are the options available for me? Okay, I can say do not allow the green turn. That is this is one turn from coming from top to left side. So, I disallow this turn. So, if you disallow certain turns, you will be able to avoid deadlock. So, I can remove the green turn, I can remove the blue turn, I can remove the pink and the purple turn. This is the purple color by the way, they both look similar, but that one is the purple color. So, I will just slide, this is the purple color. Okay, so there are three options we are going to look here. One is the west first. This west first algorithm as the word says you have to travel in the west direction first meaning in case you want to go west you should take the west direction to begin with. If you are not going into the west direction then no problem ok. So, if you look at here you can pause the video and find out which turn you will restrict to fit the west first algorithm. Let us look at the green one in the version 1. In V1 if you look at the green turn, what does it do? It goes to the south and then it goes to south and then it goes to the west this way and the algorithm says west first. So, here in the green turn, the west direction is happening later. So, this is not permitted. If you look at uh, the purple one, here I am going west and then I am going north. So, this is okay because first I am taking the west. About the pink, pink I am going north and then I am going east. I am not going to the west direction. So, this is perfectly all right. Okay. So, if you have understood the logic, pause the video and find out which turns you will disable. Okay. So, I am going to disable the green turn in the version 1 and I am going to disable the blue turn in the version 2. So, I am going to remove the green and remove the blue in these two versions. So, if I uh, restrict them that is any packet can either follow uh, this or it can follow this that is it cannot take certain turns then it will guarantee deadlock freedom. The proof of this is outside the scope of this subject, but you can look it up at other literature. Another example is north last. Okay, you can again pause the video try it out for yourself. North last says you should go in the north direction at the end if at all you want to go to the north direction. If I look at the green one, it goes to the south and it goes to the west. I am not touching the north direction, so this is perfectly all right. If you take this, this goes to the west and then to the north. I am going in the north in the last hop, so this is permitted. 
what about the pink one see pink goes to the north and then pink goes to the east so this is a problem because i have to go in the north at the end but i'm going in the north and then i'm going to the east so we cannot permit this pink turn okay similarly you can derive something for the v2 and this in v1 i'm going to prohibit the pink turn and in v2 i'm going to prohibit the blue turn in the right top corner so this blue is the top right corner in v2 okay third one is negative first negative first is south direction so you should go in the south direction to begin with okay again you can pause the video solve it for yourself and then restart to check your answer okay so ho hopefully you were able to derive this so in v1 we are going to restrict the blue turn and in v2 also the blue turn so negative first means go left first and then you can for x you have to go left first and for y you have to go down first so negative uh, essentially doesn't only mean south it also means the negative direction of your uh, coordinate system so this is negative x direction and this is your negative y direction so if you are following any of this you should first take the negative direction okay so these are three examples of turn models now you would say well they work very well so why not remove any turn at random or can i just say that all turns are okay well not because not all turn models are valid see look at this example we have v1 and v2 and suppose i remove any two turns okay does any two turn removing leads to deadlock freedom if we remove the northwest that is the blue and the purple right blue and purple similar shades i'm going to remove top right is blue bottom left is purple if i remove them what will happen so uh, in v1 i have removed the purple i have removed the purple in v1 and i have removed the blue in v2 so this i have done in v2 and this i have done in v1 okay now see what i will do is i'll try to rearrange them and i will demonstrate that you can still form a cycle so this is v1 that's v2 and here is the connection so if you connect this this can easily go here and you can see that you have formed a cycle hence uh, this shows that or rather this counter example shows that removing these two turns does not give you deadlock freedom okay so that was the turn model now the next routing algorithm is up star down star routing so this is like a regular expression up star means you can take the up direction zero or more times and then down star means down direction zero or more times but you cannot take an up direction after the down direction okay so up or you can go only up and then you can go only down so as the word up and down says i need some kind of direction for this what does up mean and what does down mean so it's no longer a four quadrant coordinate geometry it is only up or down and hence it is uh, kind of similar to a tree type structure where i go up the tree and then i go down the tree so my network has to be uh, designed or numbered such that it forms a tree type structure so what are what is my network made up of it is made up of the nodes which are going to send and receive information and then we have all these switches so all the nodes have to be at the leaf and the intermediate switches will be the intermediate uh, root nodes or the parents of these leaf nodes throughout the network and the numbering of the nodes should be such that i should be able to move in the uh, monotonic up direction and then the monotonic down direction okay so uh, we'll take one quick example to understand the concept more details out of the scope of this topic right so for up star down star routing we assume that we have bidirectional link and if i can uh, make the topology at a tree structure i can set a set of legal paths which are uh, good enough for a deadlock free routing so we are going to form a tree and we go up the tree and then we go down the tree in the graph i'm going to number the nodes such that as we go uh, up the tree the numbers increase so here this is a hypercube 
So if you can see here, this is the way the numbering is done and if I want to follow an up star down star routing, I need to rearrange this into a tree structure and then decide the direction in which I can go. A simpler way to uh, map this or uh, routing to a given example here is I want to go from say yellow to red what are we going to do we will go uh, follow one dimension first and then follow the next dimension. So in this I will first start with the LSB bit and try to go towards the destination and match the LSB bit. So my source is 0, 0, 001 and my destination is 110. I am going to use the LSB first I am going to look at this and this bit has changed. So I will try to move in the direction which gives me the LSB bit as 0 and if you see here I will have to go in this direction. Once I go to this direction my LSB matches with the destination but my other two bits do not match. So once I am there I need to make sure that I reach towards the destination. So I started from 001 we went to 000 and the destination is 110. So keeping this in mind we have already achieved this uh, right we have achieved this going in this direction then I will try the middle bit. So to, for that I have to go to this node and then I will go in the this dimension to reach here. Right? So this could be also uh, kind of a dimension order routing but if you have an even bigger network you have to make sure that you construct or you are able to label the nodes in the form of a tree. So all these are the nodes and they are forming the leaf nodes and overall the intermediate switches are arranged as the uh, root nodes or intermediate root nodes of the whole tree. So we are going to construct a spanning tree of the network graph where the host are at the leaf and all the other nodes are in the intermediate levels. So how will the routing establish here? We will start from the source and move up the tree and you have to go up the tree up to a point which is a common ancestor and from the common ancestor you should start going down the tree. So that is why it is called up star down star routing. So from any source you can go up the tree, take a single turn not multiple turns, take a single turn and then 0 or more times go down the tree to reach the destination. So this is a logical tree which you have to construct to uh, arrive at an up star down star routing algorithm. So another way of avoiding deadlock, so we looked at turn model earlier, the second method is using virtual channels. So virtual channels or VCs as they are called, what are these? So these are as the word says virtual, they are channels but they are virtual. So this blue one which I am showing here, this is a channel or uh, a channel can easily be represented by the buffer space which is available. So any data which comes inside this will go only in this direction no matter you have several uh, cells in this buffer. So to construct a virtual channel, I am going to say that this is my physical channel and this physical channel will be used logically as multiple channels. So overall, I am going to split this buffer into two pieces and say that this is my physical channel and now my buffer is divided across two logical channels and they will do time sharing on the same physical channel. So if they do time sharing, Essentially what do you have? You have two virtual channels from one physical set of buffers. Okay, so we are going to multiplex multiple channels on the same physical channel. So that is the concept of virtual channels. Now how can I use this for deadlock freedom? Well you can say that certain turns I will avoid on certain VCs. Right? So you have multiple virtual circuits now and you can say a particular virtual channel will not permit so and so turn, another virtual channel will not permit the other set of turns and this way by avoiding turns on different VCs we can avoid the deadlock. 
The other use of virtual channels is to solve protocol level deadlock. We have come up with this, uh, we have come across this term when we looked at coherence and the traffic. Why? Because uh, multiple types of traffic go onto the network and if I am wanting to send my request onto the bus, at the same time there is some other uh, node which is expecting a response from my node, right. So, I want to send out a request at the same time some other node is expecting a response from me. Uh, so, I, if I say that I will only give you the response after my request is sent out, right. So, if the buffers are arranged like this, see, this is the request and that is the response packet. So, until the request is popped out the response cannot proceed. So, if you do this you are going to encounter a protocol level deadlock, but we can solve this using VCs. How? What I will do is I will use a separate VC for the different types that is the request traffic goes on one type of a virtual network and the request uh, response goes on another virtual network. So, this way protocol level deadlocks can also be solved using virtual channels. Okay. Uh, so, overall that is the idea of routing. So, we have looked at a few routing algorithms and the idea of deadlock how it can be solved using turn model and uh, virtual channels. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.